everybody. We're back with another episode of Body, Mind, Spirit. And I'm so excited to have Dr. Ruth Roberts with us. Um, let me tell you, this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about pets and I'm a big animal lover. So I'm very excited to have you here, Dr. Ruth. Oh, um, Dr. Betsy, I'm so happy to be here. You this know, is awesome. how did you get into veterinary medicine and then what you're doing today? So I mean, when I was 12, I knew I wanted to work with pets because there, there was the dog, Ed, Ed, the dog was her name or Boogie. She had a lot of different names, but she was, she was my touchstone when I was a kid. You know, we all go through weird stuff when we're kids and she was the thing that kept me feeling safe and connected to the planet. And so from that, I knew that it was my duty and my honor to be able to serve pets and help them stay healthy and help them stay connected to their families. You know, that's, um, it's so awesome. And now you've expanded out of the traditional like veterinary office into doing like all these amazing programs where you're even coaching people today. You're teaching people how to be pet coaches. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What is that yeah. about? Well, I mean, I think that anyone that had a has had a pet in the last two years during the COVID has found out how hard it is to get veterinary care for your pets. And often the the solutions that are offered are just very cookie cutter. They're not really designed to be specifically for your pet. And so my goal was to teach perfectly ordinary, passionate pet parents and pet pros how to offer holistic solutions with food supplements that could actually support pets with chronic disease and help them deal with that and move forward in life. You know, something I never really thought about was chronic with chronic disease until my dog started having problems. So I'm going to just, I have to thank Dr. Ruth because you know, so many times when I talk about gut health for people and leading to like chronic disease, I never thought about it for my pets. So yeah, I'm, we're feeding them Doritos. Basically we're feeding them <laughs> beef flavored Doritos and expecting them to have healthy gut function. And it's, it's not working out so well. What kind of things do you see when, when it comes to gut health in your pets? Well, and that's it. So we we say gut health and automatically you think of the normal stuff, vomiting, diarrhea, burping, all of that yucky stuff. But the problem is, is that it ends up impacting other parts of the body. And the most common area is skin. So itchy dogs, ear infections, anal gland issues, that's super common. And then eventually, you know, kidney dysfunction and sadly cancer is on the list as well. So it's 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 a simple topic sort of at the surface, but the effects of gut dysbiosis or leaky gut syndrome is just terrible. You know, I have to say, so I'll tell everybody a little bit what happened with my dog is, so I have a 150 pound bull mastiff, who's my baby. He's my lap dog at 150 pounds. And he, from the time he was little, well, he ended up, he got an infection, was on antibiotics, and then developed a lot of different skin problems all the way up to the point where he had a tumor on his leg. And I went to Dr. Ruth and I was like, all right, I'm desperate. I don't know what to do. You know, the next step is going to be that they're going to have to cut this thing off of his leg. And I'm really nervous that a three-year-old dog might have cancer. And so we tested his gut health and we looked at his, like, well, tested his food sensitivities and like, I was shocked at how many different foods he was sensitive to. And it was everything that was in his dog kibble that we were feeding him. So all right. I turned around was just literally just putting, like getting food that fit his profile and the tumor went away, his skin got better. And the funniest thing I, I was telling you recently is all of a sudden, I think he got his sense of smell because we used to joke that his nose was broken because something would drop on the floor in front of his face. And we'd be like, go get it, go get it. And he'd just be like, um, did I'm not- what? What? And now he walks around sniffing everything. And we're like, what did you just find your nose? And I'm like, oh, I bet you he's got less swelling in his sinuses and now can smell. Right. Things. Now he can smell because all the mucus and grossness is gone. So he can actually smell what he's, oh, wow. Okay. Right and on. It's so funny because he walks around like now he's like, like inhaling everything. <laughs> like, what are you doing? But that, so. I mean, but the but the results you got were just amazing with a really simple shift in what you were doing. So that's that's the power of food and nutrition. And you know, it's so important, I think, too, because uh, from a body mind spirit 
um, human standpoint, like anybody who has a pet, they've shown that we have more neurotransmitters. We have more happy hormones. I think there's some studies that we live longer. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of interesting studies. So certainly there the people that have pets, they have less issue with depression, anxiety, and also because you have to get out and walk your dog or go outside and play with them, you're moving more. So you're living longer, the dog's living longer. And ultimately, if your pet is healthy and happy, their neurotransmitters are are on task and it helps yours stay on task as well. That is amazing. And you know, the other thing is you started off like backing up a little bit here with that, that croc, was it the croc pet diet? The original croc pet diet. Yep. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. So that was born uh, because one of my own dogs back in 2005 developed a terrible infection on her heart valve called bacterial endocarditis. And this is something that is often fatal, sadly. So she survived it. I got through, I got her through the, with conventional treatment and I was studying acupuncture at the time at the Chi Institute, took her with me. My professor said, okay, you need to do these acupoints and uh, try these herbal formulas. And they said, you really need to cook for this dog. And that was frightening because my profession, we've been taught that if it's not in the bag, it's not good. You know, you're going to kill your dog with table scraps. And this dog would not let me put acupuncture needles in her, but she thought the herbs were okay. And she thought the cooking was an outstanding idea. And Betsy, Dr. Betsy, I watch on ultrasound as a lesion this big on her heart valve shrunk down to the width of a piece of paper. And she, she had developed this at the age of nine. She lived to be 13 just amazing. So that convinced me that food was indeed medicine. So we started developing the rudimentary versions of the original crock pet diet right as the first pet food recall came out in 2006 and seven. And it was crazy because people were so afraid they didn't know what to feed. And what they found was that the dog's gut problems went away. They stopped having diarrhea. They stopped scratching. They stopped chewing on their feet. So that was proof to me that I could not go back to recommending any type of commercial food. Yeah, that's the hard thing with the commercial foods. Like I've seen it, you know, having a pet and having dogs, like I've seen where they've been recalled because dogs were having too much vitamin D <clears throat> issues. Then this whole, like you thought you're being healthy for your dog and we switched off the greens and we went to lentils. And then they're like, no, lentils is going to cause heart problems. So it has become very confusing about what to feed your dog or pet. It, so. it has. And, and the problem is, is that, uh, you know, for instance, one of the companies that makes prescription diets just had a recall this week. Uh, and, and also the pet food gets manufactured according to what they think consumers want, but they're still packaging it up incorrectly. Lentils aren't bad, but if your diet is 80% lentils, that's kind of creates some problems, especially if you're a golden retriever or a Labrador. So it's just, it's so hard. Yeah. With the crock. Pet, and then I start thinking like, I have, I have to admit, I haven't tried, I haven't tried the crock pet yet. I know I, I need to do it, but I think what I hold back is I'm like, it seems like I mean, it's enough for me to cook for the family. I'm like, Oh my God, I got to cook for the dog. <laughs> so yeah. And, and it is, it's daunting. Um, so when my wife and I first met, we had five dogs and five cats, but the cool thing is, is you can cook it, freeze it, boom, you're good to go. We could knock out food for a month and about four hours on a Sunday afternoon. So it just was such a, it's a daunting thing to think about, but it's sort of, it's one of those things where it's either you pay with time and love up front or you're going to pay on the back end with enormous vet bills and, and all sorts of things. The other awesome thing is because it's just grocery, you know, stuff you're getting at the grocery store. Uh, if you just add a little salt, it's pretty delicious. So it's, it's served as a meal multiple times for me. Oh, that's great. So, you're right. Cause it's all, they're all just, you know, it's all the foods that we'd be eating too. So. Exactly. Oh my goodness. That is wonderful. I have to actually say with the, with my dog, I've actually started making him his own dog treats um, right on. and taking like fruits and vegetables that he, that are on his list that, that don't bother him. And we just stick them in, we don't have a dehydrator. We just stick them in the oven at a very low temperature 
Perfect. for like hours uh, and then we they dry and we put them all in this little treat container and he loved it we got we got dried green beans we got dried apples yeah. like whatever that can dry we we dry them up and this way we're using those as treats and he loves them and that's perfect i mean it just it makes it so simple yeah so this and is ultimately you've really reduced your dog's carbon footprint because if you think about with the way pet food is sold they're making it in a factory somewhere in Kansas or Thailand or God only knows where, putting it into a container, wrapping all that up into a container ship, wrapping that with plastic, and then shipping it back across to the U.S. So this is a way to really reduce environmental impact of pets as well. You know, and that's a good thing. And we're not wasting food because the other night we had green beans and I asked the family, is anybody going to eat these leftover green beans anytime after tonight? And everyone looked at me like, no. And I was like, all right, I'm throwing them in the oven and I'm drying them, <laughs> giving them to the dog. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right on. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk more when we come back from the commercial break. The best things in life are the people we love, the places we've been, and the memories we've made along the way. Don't let your pelvic health get in the way of your life. The Pelvic Floor Store, your resource for personal health. And we're back with Dr. Ruth Roberts. So Dr. Ruth, I was thinking, you know, I talk a lot on this show about body, mind, spirit when it comes to human health. Do we, we have to think about the same types of things when it comes to our pets? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you... Probably if you've had pets for a long time, you've realized if you're like really stressed out at work or you're really worried about what's going on with your mom or your brother or whatever, if you're kind of, you know, going around like that all the time, your dog is like, ha ah, ha too. And so one of the things I've always told my consulting clients is for three minutes a day, turn off your phone, turn off the alarms, the notifications, all of that stuff, and just sit down, preferably outside if you can, with your dog and just hang out for three minutes and breathe and pet your dog, pet your cat, whatever your pet is, just hang out and be completely present with them. And most people will find three minutes stretches easily into five or 10 or 15 or whatever it is. But just by interrupting all of that stress, you start to calm down, your dog starts to calm down, your cat starts to calm down, everybody gets a lot happier. So same, same setup with stress creates excess cortisol in us, it creates excess cortisol in them as well. You know, I was thinking about during the pandemic, it was the best time to raise a dog because my poor first dog, I was thinking like I took two weeks off when I had my very first dog and then it was back to work and the dog was in the house by itself all day long. And so now here with the, with the pandemic, this dog pretty much got spoiled because it had the family home all the time, but now right. people are back to their, you know, back to the grind, you know. Some people luckily are still working from home, but some people have had to return to the office. Like what effect have you seen on pets when it comes to that? And that, and that's the, exactly what you're describing. All of a sudden the dog's like, where the heck is everybody? And so we saw a massive increase in separation anxiety. And so that's where it's so important to do something very centering. There's a video I did some years ago about a clearing energy technique. So, and really, I think you're clearing both your energy and the dogs, but there's lots of different ways to help that dog uh, really get rid of that anxiety Walking is great. Uh, chewing on bones is great because that's what they do. And if they can on a bone, that helps them just release a lot of a lot of anxiety. So the uh, pandemic was great for dogs. And then when everybody went back for work, not so great. What about, you know, I keep focusing on dogs because that's what I have. But what about like for cats or birds or whatever people might have at home? Yeah, I mean, we think of cats as being really aloof. And but they respond to us differently. Um, they tend to, like Pepe, our cat that travels with us, if I've been away for a while and we've been out of the house for, for 
several hours hiking, he's like, where in the heck have you guys been? Uh, and part of it's like, you're late because it's dinner time, but part of it is he really did miss us. And so it's it's really important to be cognizant of that with birds, especially parrots, whose intelligence is so off the charts, they get really stressed out as well. And so it's important to do things with them that will help alleviate their stress too. And then I was going to ask you, you know, with people, if they're anxious or depressed, that can lead to disease. But then the opposite, we see if someone's gut health is, you know, or if they have inflammation elsewhere in the body, that can contribute to anxiety and depression. Do we see that with animals? Absolutely. We're all mammals and it's the, it's the same setup. If you have gut health problems, if you have dysbiosis, that's where 90% of our trans neurotransmitters and pets neurotransmitters are produced. And so if the bad guys are in charge, it is not good because they're creating neurotransmitters that are going to make us feel heavy, depressed, all of those things. Same thing with pets. It will increase their anxiety level. Um, we'll see other diseases is sometimes like almost like an obsessive compulsive disorder, things of that nature. So, and if you have chronic disease creating more cortisol, then you have this really terrible feedback loop going on. So it's critically important to make sure the gut's functioning well. And for a pet with anxiety, that's one of the first places I'll start working. You know, it makes me think about all the pets that are in shelters. And I'm like, I'm wondering you know, cause some of, some of the reasons they end up in shelters may be because the owner couldn't handle the behavior, but I'm wondering if we look at the gut health and look at the gut health of those, you know, get those dogs on healthier, our pets on healthier diets would those behavior problems improve. Absolutely. And sadly, behavior problems are the number one reason that pets end up in the shelter. So that's part of what, uh, what I've been training my coaches to help pet parents with is how to work on the gut, how to improve the gut health, how to use uh, simple tests like the one you used to really make a massive difference. And honestly, that test has saved me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars in vet bills because prior to that test, we were always at the vet because he had ear infections or he would get anal gland infections or he'd get come some kind of weird skin infection. And since we changed his diet, I, like all of a sudden like disappeared. So it's just, been, it's been amazing. Really. I just, I love that so much because it, it doesn't have to be difficult or complex. I know. I always, I used to, <laughs> I used to joke and I would tell the dog, hopefully he doesn't understand me. I'm like, dude, I'm returning you. You're defective. <laughs> because I had, he had had so many health problems from the time yeah. we got him. I was like, man, I got the defective one. Let's return him. And I loved him to death. We weren't going to return him, but it really, I mean, it's also well, peace of mind for me too. So exactly. And it's heartbreaking and it's frustrating. So I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So tell me a little bit more about your, your coaching program. It's uh, it it's really I'm 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 astonished I'm just astonished. So, we it's a 16 week program, uh, 14 modules, two weeks sort of for catch up in between. But what I've done is teach people the precepts of functional medicine, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, and then how to use the original crock pet diet and develop first the one of the first things we talk about is improving gut health so we go through each of the organs um, as far as liver kidney that sort of thing and teach the students sort of the basic physiology how to use functional medicine to address problems and also how to use tcbm or traditional chinese veterinary medicine to address problems and then we have coaching calls every week uh, so we'll i'll They'll get on the call with me. We'll answer questions. And then they also have a mentor that they work with and have a week, weekly call with that mentor as well. So we're offering them a tremendous amount of support so that they can learn the concepts and also how to turn that into a business that can support them. So it's just been phenomenal. And the impact that they are making so quickly has just been mind-blowing. It just I'm so delighted that this is working so well. That is so incredibly exciting. Where can people find out more about you, more about the Crock-Pet diet, more about your program? It's 
simple drruthroberts.com. Yeah, so it's very easy. And then I, what I didn't mention is if you go there too, she's got tons of amazing supplements also. So definitely go in uh, the articles and getting on your email list. Like I would highly recommend people get on the email list because I'm always getting amazing information in my inbox. So right on. Well, yeah. And that's the goal is to give you information you can use to make a big impact. Awesome. So if you're thinking about getting a pet or if you have a pet, you definitely need to check this out. So thank you, Dr. Ruth, for taking the time with us today. And everybody, please go check those out when you while you're there. Don't forget to check out wytv7.org and also hit our, the donate button because every dollar that you donate helps support our community events, our scholarships and more programming like this. So right thank on. you, Dr. Ruth, for taking the time. With pleasure.